Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about the chemistry exam. Chemistry exam is a widely sat exam and it is particularly important for those of you who are aspiring to study medicine at Monash Uni because it is a prerequisite there. For those of you who are new here, my name is Darren. I'm a second year med student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. With VC, I graduated in 2020 with an ATAR of 99.95 and a score of 44 in chemistry. The reason I achieved as high as 44 was because of my phenomenal teacher. He explained things meticulously, answered all my questions, so I could really achieve a good understanding of the topic as I learnt it. The reason I didn't score higher, I think, is entirely on me. Not I think, it is entirely on me. Because the chemistry exam was my last exam, and it was also certainly going to be my seventh subject, and I put in a bit of a lackluster effort, which is why I didn't score higher. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys how to prepare for the chemistry exam in two parts. Not necessarily how I prepared, but how I recommend you guys prepare through what my teacher advised and through what I've observed with people around me and also what I've tried as well. So the first part of today's video, if you've seen the other videos, who could have guessed? It's just exam timings. So how I distributed my time in the exam and what order I set the sections in. And in the second part of today's video, I'll be talking about the exact preparation process. So what you can concretely do before the exam to be very well prepared. Enjoy. Before we hop into the first section, as usual, just a look at the actual exam itself. So it's on Tuesday, the 8th of November. You have two hours and 45 minutes to sit it. Included in that is your 15 minutes of reading time. If you're looking for more VC chemistry advice, I made a similar video last year. And I also have this sort of top three tips for VC chemistry that you can check out as well. Anyway, let's hop into it. So we'll be talking about timed exams or yeah, timed practice exams. So as mentioned, you have 15 minutes reading time and that means you have two hours and 30, so 150 minutes to complete the actual exam. So in the 15 minutes, I spent it entirely on extended response. And in the 150 minutes, so writing time, I would start with the extended response and then complete the short answer. So the reasoning behind why I do things is important because that way you understand why I do it. And also you can apply your reasoning and maybe use the exam a different way to me. So. The reason I started with ex with extended response is because it sort of builds a story. You have parts A, B, C, D, and I felt that I really wanted to get my head around how one question led to the other and the and the question one, the whole thing as a whole. And so I try to do that in reading time. So I don't need to write anything. I just think about how one question links to the next. And of course, once I've done that, it sort of naturally makes sense to move into extended response in writing time as well. With short answer, on the other hand, I sort of sat at second because the questions are discrete and disparate from one another, first off, but also compared to math exams, I found that the chemistry extended response, uh, the chemistry multiple choice questions are actually quite hard. They often require multiple steps and are just quite a difficult questions. And so that meant that I could spend a lot of time on them, but I'd only, in reading time, but I'd only reach like question like five or something. Whereas it'd be much better off spending it on extended response where they're sort of built to one another. So the questions are also quite elaborate for short answer. Not short answer, multiple choice. M C Q. The questions are yeah quite elaborate. Okay, with exact timings, I didn't find chemistry was particularly time pressured in my practice exams. In the actual exam, I only had like six, seven minutes left. But in my practice exam, I didn't feel it was too time pressured, so I thought you know it was it was decent. Um, but as usual. You can develop your own timings, but some general rules, try and if you're not aiming for a, an extremely high study score, if a question is really hard, just try and gain the small marks. So gain the easy marks. If you, if you complete 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3C, 3A, 3B, that's a pretty good effort rather than spending like too much time on the last part of a certain question. And in addition to all these timings, the usual things apply, so really sitting the exam in exam conditions. So exam conditions. So with your scientific calculator, whichever one you're using, with all the tools you have, so all the stationery, and with your watch as well. 
And yeah, I think that's it with what I wanted to talk about with timings. And you can have a look at that, but we'll move into how to prepare. So how to actually prepare. A really good starting point is to go through the study design. This is something I did a little bit and I found that it was really, really effective. So I felt if I did it the whole way through, it would have been even more effective. So on the study design, they have these dot points. So this is from unit three, this is from unit four, and it really covers everything you need to know. So it's really useful to go through each of these and make sure you know them. And literally when you see your exam, you'll be like, huh, I remember seeing that on the study design. I remember seeing that on the study design. And I found that this was very true for chemistry questions, for chemistry exam questions. So going through the study design is a very good step. I'll write the steps down here. So one, study design is really nice to, to, to have a look at. And two, I think it's really important to reflect on your mistakes. This is true for, for any exam, but for chemistry particularly, a lot of the formulas you can manipulate around. And I think that if you make a mistake, don't just don't just see the question, do it, and then and then like, oh, that's where I got it wrong. But try and understand the manipulation of the formula because they'll ask a similar question next time, but the formula is slightly different and you have to rearrange it differently. And you wanna make sure that you can be able to do that, um, do that after getting it wrong once, rather than figuring it out after getting it wrong twice. Um, the other thing in terms of uh, reflecting on weak areas is that a lot of the questions in chemistry are a little repetitive. So I'll be talking, so formulas, and sort of repetitive questions. So formulas, I guess, is more short uh, MCQ. I keep saying short answer, MCQ. And repetitive questions are more in extended response. So if you look at a stoichiometry question, they usually lead you into it the same way. They ask, what's the mass of this? What's the mole of this? The mass of something else, the mole of something else. And then you gotta like look at it and arrange the stoichiometry. So if you get one step in that question wrong, it's really useful to understand why you got it wrong because they're gonna ask a similar question next time. So that's why understanding of not just the exact mistake you made, but the misunderstanding behind it and um, the, the entire question, looking at the parts you got right as well and how they lead to one another is an important and really useful step in chemistry. And for high, oh, actually, no, the other point is I think topic tests were really useful in chemistry because I think chemistry is very content heavy. If you, you can just do, they have, TSSM has like unit three tests on you know certain topics like gases, thermochemistry, fuels. And I found that those topic tests were really nice because they would test my specific knowledge without you know overwhelming me and work on that specific aspect of chemistry. So those are very useful as well. And this final tip is more for people who are really guiding for really high marks. But in chemistry, they've sort of moved towards these really difficult and sort of theoretical questions. So comparing fuels, sort of a more like, like an Elon Musk kind of question in, uh, especially the last question of the chemistry exam, if you have a look at those. And so I'll recommend you really analyze your answer for those. So prep for difficult questions. So not, don't just do the maths questions, the um, really easy, and, and like the stoic, the process questions, but you need to prep for the sort of written essay-like questions. And you wanna compare your answer to the answer that Vika has given, because oftentimes there are a lot of like buzzwords you gotta use. And that's actually true for some of the extend, other extended response questions as well. You need to say things like frequency rather than just it, it collides more because more means amount, whereas frequency means amount over time, which is what we're actually measuring here. But yeah, for, for the high achievers, there is last questions where they ask you hypothetical questions. You really want to um, look through and analyze because those like those questions are hefty, five or six marks. And they're also where you'll be able to differentiate yourself a little bit. So, that, so that's it with the chem exam. Um, we talked about the timings. And we talked about how to prepare, a couple ways to prepare. So study design is a good place to start. When you sit practice exams, you can sit topic tests and complete exams. And after you sit those exams, you can reflect on your weak areas. Um, and finally, just as the cherry on top, have a look at those really difficult essay-like questions if you're gunning for high marks. If you're not, like eliminate silly mistakes, the usual, because 
the bulk of your marks, you can gain a lot of marks just by getting the easy ones right. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, good luck with your studies and I look forward to seeing you all next time.